Okay, welcome back. And we would start our Quad Summit opening keynote. And we've got a powerful speaker for the opening keynote. Let me introduce, ladies and gentlemen, Amrish Tripathi, SVP and Global Business Leader for Genpak. Welcome, Amrish. Let me give a brief background and professional credentials about Amrish. Amrish is responsible for setting up the vision and strategy for the company's growing augmented intelligence practice, which blends AI-powered analytics with human judgment. He oversees more than 10,000 data analytics and AI professionals in the role. Under his leadership, Genpak Analytics business has been recognized repeatedly as an industry leader, passionate about team collaboration and empowering employees to succeed. Amrish was instrumental in launching Genpak's Data Bridge program. The award-winning initiative ensures every employee has access to the tools and skills they need to unlock the power of data to drive value for the clients. Before joining Genpak, Amrish was a partner with PwC, where he oversaw the firm data and analytics consulting practice of whopping 500 million business. Throughout his career, he's advised executives, senior executives at some of the world's largest companies on using data and analytics to transform their businesses. Amrish is a speaker, a frequent speaker at industry events and regularly shares his perspective with leading media outlets. In addition, he's an adjunct professor and data science of data science and business analytics at the University of Northern Carolina at Charlotte. Amrish also holds a Master of Science degree from University of Texas at Austin and an undergraduate degree in engineering from NIT, India. Thank you so much, Amrish. Over to you. Thank you so much, Sameer. Uh, great setup and, and, and what a great uh, event that you guys have put together. Uh, we'll, we'll love to support this. Uh, and it's it's great. I mean, I mean, it's obviously 4 a.m. from my, so my side. So excuse me if, if this, I'm a little bit groggy. But what's really interesting is this is kind of a sounds like an e like a association and event uh, for the people and by the people kind of a thing. So it's like all insiders. Uh, so which is which is always much more of a fun discussion because you can go into a little bit of the detail. Uh, so it, let me just share a little bit of what we are going to what I'm going to cover here. Uh, fairly quickly. Uh, and uh, hopefully you're able to see my screen here. That'll probably come up fairly quickly. Yeah. Uh, so when I was thinking about what's the title I should give the opening keynote, uh, it is basically a Dickens, uh, a Dickens quote, best of times or the worst of times. Uh, if you've read that, read the book, uh, that's what it came to mind. And, and there's a reason for that. And we'll kind of cover that. What I want to kind of cover before I kind of get started as to where things are and what, what my perspective is on uh, on this, just wanted to kind of cover what, what my biases are. Obviously, I kind of I'm part of Genpact, which which is a BPM firm. It started as a BPM firm for doing a lot of digital transformations right now as a large professional services firm, uh, which is a unique mix of, I would say, software and, and consulting and BPM all mixed together right now to drive client value. And within that, I run the what you call the analytics business is called the augmented intelligence analytics and AI business is called the augmented intelligence business and 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 kind of you have some facts about it. Uh, more than 10,000 folks and uh, long history, a uh, lot of clients across the world and every industry. So that kind of brings a set of set of biases to me uh, and, and, and all my discussion, what I would talk about will represent obviously kind of the context in which I operate. Uh, so some of the some most of it should be relevant for across the board, but some of it probably will be a little bit more uh, specific to this point of view. Uh, and and what I want to kind of talk about is just a little bit of reflection of where we are right now uh, as an industry. Uh, the first one is it's actually we are at an inflection point for those of us who've been uh, in this space for a fair amount of years. I've been mean, probably close to twenty years for me. Uh, it, it, analytics, AI, whatever, the, with very various terms, it was the back office of a back office. And right now it's a board level discussion, right? And and you can see the inflection point right now for, for those of us who've been around. I mean, if you look at uh, look at the valuation of companies, of like pure play analytics companies, whether it's Layton View, whether it's Fractal, uh, look at the kind of the demand for our skill set right now. I mean, it's through the roof. Everyone is struggling with hiring and ret retaining and uh, and training more people, which is a fantastic thing. Uh, look at the number of CDAOs uh, that are in the organizations. It's it's a very established uh, uh, it's it's a very established role right now, though it's still evolving. 
and and that tells you it's like it's it's very different, right? I mean, I, I mean, that's I, I used to have a joke with that. Uh, pr probably like so whoever came up with the word big data and then like position AI as a marketing term rather than a technical term. I, I mean, probably all of us should owe some royalty in terms of our salaries to them. But it, it is it really feels it's a very different kind of a inflection point right now. The second point uh, that I wanted, wanted to focus on is it's become a very interdisciplinary practice. Uh, I have a background in operations research. Uh, and uh, right now, you have computer scientists, you have designers, you have, uh, I mean, like philosophers right now with the ethics, ethics and discussion. Everyone is in the mix. And I'll, I'll give you a, one data point which makes it very real. So uh, what Sameer was telling me, I'm, I'm, on the, I'm, on the, I'm the chair of the board, advisory board for uh, University of North Carolina uh, in Charlotte, uh, in the School of Data Science. And in the school, of, and one of the things they do is they actually do, they collaborate with other schools for research. Uh, and there were 147 uh, National Science Foundation applications that went in. Uh, I think this is the last time they, they did that of research applications for, for, for uh, funding. And, and they go from every school. They go from in, the English departments, they go from uh, jurisprudence, they go from social work to biology to computer science everywhere. And out of 147, 67% of all applications had a partnership with School of Data Science. And that kind of tells you how massively connected it is in pretty much every, it's becoming a tool for pretty much every type of uh, discipline and, and, and it's become massively interdisciplinary. And then the last part is, while it's all great, it's actually equal parts, I would say, confusion and excitement. Uh, and why do I say confusion? Uh, number one is, it is, the, the infusion of tech, right? And the whole unraveling of the tech infrastructure and the tech stack in analytics, as we see right now, right? I mean, those of us who grew up, I mean, we, if you knew SQL, if you, if you, if you kind of, if you, if you could manage SAS, uh, you were in business, oh, SPSS also, right? If you were in business and you could, you could make your way around. Right now, there's an, in, the entire data layer has been unbundled, right? You have Fivetran, you have, uh, DBT, you have like Redshift, uh, Data IQ. I mean, you th think about technology. There are like hundreds of technologies in the data stack right now, uh, and that's to be honest, very confusing. I mean, those of us who kind of th that's a, who's a job is to kind of go and focus and understand and learn. We are also kind of having to keep track of it. What's the chance, like a layman uh, who's not this is not the day to day thing? What was the chance? So there's a lot of excitement on the on the opportunities that 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 it creates, but at the same time, it's a fairly confusing space. And I think that 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 bears some keeping in mind as to how you should navigate uh, in 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 that context. So with these, just a little bit of the context of where they are. So what are the three themes uh, that are that at least I'm focused on that's on top of mind uh, for me? The first one I think is was what we call data analytics becoming a business spot. And what I mean, mean by that, uh, one of our top discussions with most of our senior leaders, the chief, chief data, the, the, whether it's CDOs, CIOs, CIOs, CEOs, is around data literacy. How do I, oh, I have a lot of people working and I need to make them, they are, their data IQ is, I mean, is, is an analytics IQ is more than what it is so that they can, uh, they can leverage all these technologies and drive value, right? But the reality is, uh, this, this is all the client of mine uh, where we had a discussion and over dinner he mentioned, uh, Amresh, where is all the analysis we have lost in the name of analytics? And there's some truth to that. Uh, what is What has happened is uh, in the race to make it a technical field, uh, there's somewhere along the way, we, as practitioners, I think we sometimes get more fascinated by the latest XGBoost algorithm, sometimes by kind of the, the best way to kind of organize data in a real time basis. All of that is fantastic. But the reality is ROI is what really matters. I mean, how, what, what, is the, what, what is the business value of any of these things that we are doing? It's at the end of the day, AI analytics, engineering design is all tools. They're all tools to drive a business outcome. Uh, and while it is, as I said, it's, a, it's our equal parts confusion, uh, while you are, we are trying to all figure it out, it's on us uh, at, at, at some point to become more business smart. Uh, while the rest of the world and rest of our, co of our colleagues and our companies become more 
data smart. I think for it's it's, a, it's on us to be a bit smart. And and one of the things that we're going to go and focus on uh, a whole lot, especially when we we, we do it within Genpack, but across the board, I think that's relevant for our profession, uh, is this whole notion of being bilingual. Uh, you, bilingual means you you understand the technical aspect of it, but understand one of the domains, one of the industries, and understand the inner workings of that at a fair level of detail and get interested in that. Uh, so I think one of these whole themes as as there's a confusion kind of uh, the confusion will continue for some time in terms of from a tech, tech stack perspective uh the, the the continuous focus of data analytics folks to become business smart so that they can go and focus on driving the roi uh while obviously the rest of the world around us will become more and more much more data smart so i think that's kind of a one broad uh theme that that has been uh top of mind for us I mean, we have launched a lot of programs internally uh, to kind of go and facilitate. I think uh, Samir was talking about Data Bridge, which is basically think about Six Sigma meets data analytics. There's a whole host of other ways to kind of go and do that, but it's going to be a very important trend. Uh, the second one I think is 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 really interesting. Uh, this is like uh, Ben Stansel, uh, who's a CEO of a company called Mode. He talks a lot about it, and, and I'm, I'm a big fan of that, uh, which is uh, data is going to become an experience, right? Uh, left hand side, just before I was preparing for this presentation, I just went to like Zometo and I mean, the US version of it will be Yelp uh, and or Uber Eats and take a look at uh, kind of like, I mean, it's really filters, right? I mean, they were, I mean, I filtered on in Delhi, which is where I grew up and kind of the food, I'm a vegetarian and kind of, and, and, and then you, you could like choose ratings, you could choose distance, all kinds of things. Essentially, you are playing with data. It's a dashboard. I mean, in, it's, it's a dashboard that you are filtering and you are engaging with data and but you never feel that you are actually doing. It doesn't feel like a Tableau dashboard. It doesn't feel like a, uh, it doesn't feel like a, uh, like a like a, a click or, or, or any of our any of the things that we produce uh, in, in our in large enterprises. It's a very different experience. I'm completely immersed where I kind of go and see, OK, what do I want to have for dinner? How do I do it? How do I choose it? And, and the point we're trying to make is these are literally data applications uh, and you do not feel that you are dealing with data. And one of the great examples, obviously, is, is the video gaming industry, right? I know Microsoft is going to speak there and they kind of made a massive acquisition two days or three days ago uh, in the gaming industry. And obviously, they've been super active, but it kind of starts telling you, uh, like if you go and play any, any of these sophisticated video games right now, you are actually immersing and doing so many data-driven decision decisions you're taking to, without realizing that you're actually doing that. Uh, and, and, and the reason is the, the experience of, and the immersive experiences around it is, is so deep and so detailed that you the, it just draws you in. And if you think about that, why is that not possible in our enterprises, right? Uh, and I think there are probably two big reasons. One is there's a ton of technical data debt. The technology debt is huge uh, in terms of siloed data infrastructure, this and that. I mean, you can, I mean, all of us know that we all deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis. And those who of, of, of us who are uh, uh, who are practitioners also kind of realize kind of that becomes a big challenge. Absolutely, that's true. But having said that, uh, we are also uh, we, we we have also made this whole profession a lot more focused on tools. Uh, versus skills. Uh, and what I mean by that is it becomes a little bit of, uh, okay, how, how many how many years of like Tableau experience you have? How many years of like SQL can you do? I mean, that's all important. I mean, those, those tools become important, but the skills of kind of bringing it all together to, to solve the problem and kind of the, the, the experience layer around it will become more and more important, right? And some of the tooling, by the way, I feel like the tech stack is right now ahead of our skills in many, many, many cases. Uh, and a lot of the business users, like the true super user business users, are not able to engage with a lot of these tools because it's way too technical. And on the other side of it, the, the, it's, it's how do you, the, the engagement becomes harder, even though they understand the context a lot more. So it's kind of a similar problem that we were talking about in terms of becoming business smart. But this notion around uh, data becoming an experience will be a big piece uh, in that theme. And what's really going to be interesting is who owns the data experience, right? Uh, is it 
is it analytics practitioners who would kind of and and who would who would own that will it be some combination of uh, business users who will kind of learn the technical things and they'll they'll kind of draw it how do we kind of create the zomato applications how do we create uh, 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 the, the these kind of modern what are like video gaming experiences in enterprises is i think is going to be another big theme as we kind of look for next uh, 12 to 24 months. Uh, I'll add the third one uh, that 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 we are focused on is kind of just thinking about AI going from uh, experimentation stages, good proof of values, to scale. Right. Uh, I know there's a lot of a uh, lot of younger practitioners and uh, and 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 students here. Uh, I mean, if you look at the world of Tinder and Bumble and, and everything, the fundamentally AI has changed how you meet people. Uh, it, it's no longer going to a bar and kind of reaching out. It's, 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 it's about swiping, right? And think about the biases. I mean, obviously we don't even talk about that, the biases that it, it potentially can introduce and it does introduce uh, in our decision, potentially life-changing decisions. Uh, same thing is happening in enterprises like loan applications, like whether it's small medium business loans, direct loans, and everything. It's all instant, right? Uh, and the, the, our in, this is more and more parts of our lives is starting to being driven by algorithms, right? And these algorithms are now I'm getting mature and they are getting deployed at scale. The whole quad uh, kind of the set of tool set that is that are out there that essentially allows them to uh, get to scale. And you hear things about like Airflow, ML Ops, uh, uh, AI Ops. I mean, choose your term uh, with that. And th these things are, are real. These are, these things are here. But uh, as they are here, I think there are challenges that we will face, right? And then we see some of it. Uh, we saw we see some of it already, which is like I don't know if, if the, 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 the company uh, there's a the company there's a uh, kind of a real estate tech company called Zillow. Uh, in the U.S., and they just had a they had to exit a business because they used to use uh, buy and sell houses based on algorithms that they had created, uh, and uh, they pretty much that the, the the because of the whole thing with pandemic and housing prices and everything, they kind of missed a bunch of things, and they had to kind of shut down the whole business. And basically, the entire business was algorithmically driven, uh, and that's kind of okay. That's kind of a yeah, it's an ROI kind of an implication, and you make a loss and everything. But there could be worse situations around, like there would be an end run moment for us. Those, are, those of us who've been around in early 2000s, uh, where you, without the proper governance of some of the models and some of the structures, you could get into some pretty, pretty bad situations. And that will lead to more regulations. I mean, this, this is inevitable. It's a, it's a matter of when, not if, uh, that there will be regulations in the AI space of different ways. I mean, whether it's self-driving cars, whether it's, I mean, in, in banking and insurance, you already see that. But healthcare, I think, is coming over. But there's a whole more and more kind of regulations are are going to be in this space. And uh, one of the topics, uh, kind of one of one of one of the discussions that I had with uh, s s some of the industry leaders, they, they feel that like it's going to be different versus in the U.S. versus India versus Europe. Uh, and 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 generally, the the perception is what is going to be regulations in Europe is going to be ethics in the U.S. Uh, and, and and I mean, India is somewhere in between. So I think this whole topic about regulations and ethics is going to be very important. So bring it all together. So what does that really mean? Uh, what, what does what does all of these three themes mean as, as we kind of doing it? And what can you do about it? Uh, and I think there are, there are basically two broad themes I would have as a leader and as a practitioner. If you're a leader, uh, I think it's very important that we don't become monoclonal and diversify our teams, right? bring in people with different backgrounds because if you think about it, topics like ethics and uh, ethics and uh, if you think about interdisciplinary topics if you think about being business smart what fundamentally is required you need people from different backgrounds to actually work and pick up the skill sets and welcoming the diversity in teams rather than making it a, a tech only play right having said that leaders i think most of us who kind of grew up in, in this thing which were it were when analytics and data and ai were not really a technology fields there were a lot more kind of somewhere in between business and technology fields uh, they have to appreciate technology is going to matter a lot more uh, like the whole tech stack and analytics is going to be very much more important i actually find most of the junior folks understand that a lot of the senior folks still have a trouble <laughs> getting getting through that and on the other side if you're a practitioner 
diversifying oneself. It's not going to be about the coolest AI algorithm. It's not going to be about the particular tool that you're going to use. It's going to be about ROI and businesses. If you're in the, in the if you're going to be operating the world of business analytics, right? It's going to be about ROI and diversifying ourselves and getting becoming bilingual or and making yourself a little bit broader is going to be going to be important. And business will matter. I mean, obviously tech will matter, but business will absolutely matter. Uh, so I, I just kind of uh, pause there and stop there and kind of just come back to one of the Dickens quote. It is. It was the spring of hope, and uh, and you do. We do not want it to be the winter of despair. Uh, so with that, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity, and 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 have a great fun rest of the time uh, in this conference. Thank you so much, Amrish. Uh, despite the glitch and despite you showing up at three o'clock, I think the messages, uh, what you articulated, are very well received. I think the three pieces, what you really talked about, AI becoming smart, this whole piece around experience economy. That so well resonates with our theme because design, which is uh, more broadly specified, is not just about UI, UX, it's about behavioral science, persona, anthologies, and also the piece around what you rightly said with AI at scale becoming imminent, how this ethics story, governance, regulations, compliance will become part of what I usually call algorithm economy because those pivots of how it needs to be regulated needs to come in, but absolutely, I would say simple, but profound. And that's exactly what we wanted in our opening keyword. Thank you so much uh, for your session. Really appreciate. Uh, if you have time, please stay put for the rest of the session, please. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Good. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Console, uh, move to the next session, please. Thank you.